probably halve my water bill with uh, this system, so if we can add to it, well, we might be able to be totally self-sufficient. And I think they drink a lot less of this stuff than the Todd because it's so much chlorine and, you know, it's a hard water, the old Todd water. We located here probably because we had the, the big storage tank there in the first place and the underground tank. And, it's a, and it is in a flat where a couple of roads run into it and a couple of drains, so it was pretty easy to set up here. It looked a pretty level spot. We put a dumpy plumb one in, one in just to make sure we had a fall on it and uh, gouged the blade in to dig a trench a couple of sides so we could just lay it in it and push the dirt, windrow the dirt back on it. Probably spent two or three days on the grader picking stones off it and sticks and making sure it was clean. This is about 100 by 50 roughly, probably lost a bit with your edges going in but we should catch about 300,000 gallons off it on 10 inches of rain. We had to cut the plastic and then start again so you do two rows with one roll. We got uh, the blokes in that we bought the plastic off with their little uh, plastic welders which just run on a gen set and they just crawl along. We had a bit of trouble with it because I hammer rolled it sort of with a roller after we'd grade it to try and pack it down a bit but it probably fluffed it up a bit. We're probably better off just grading it and leaving hard. And the welders were actually picking up a bit of dirt and blocking up now and again, but it wasn't too much of a problem for them. They seemed to get over that pretty easily. We end up um, just putting a couple of Toyota wheels with a stub axle, and we put some um, a drilling pipe that we could screw apart in between it, and then we joined two chains on the end of it. We just made it so it spun. It was just a matter of keeping straight as, as, as you possibly could. Overlapping was probably better than underlapping because it is pretty hard to shift once you've got it down. It's pretty heavy stuff. The wind is pretty critical with it because it will take off on you. You need plenty of blokes hanging around so you can roll tyres on it to keep it down. We actually rolled the tyres and put them all up where the plastic joined for a start because the, the welders didn't come until the day after. So we, so we tried to stop the wind getting under the joiners. We've got an underground tank there which is about 30,000 gallons and um, we pump out of that just with a Honda inch and a half pump into a bit the bigger tank and then I've got the solar pump there which can pump all over the farm. It only probably only gets up to about uh, 35 pound, I guess, from here to the north of the place, which is the highest point, but down south it runs low. You don't need a big pump because it's not pumping to high elevations. I've got another 600 watt system down the bottom, which when we get stuck we push up from there. Every trough's got a tank on it. Out the back we do pump to a high point. It gravitates to three other points, which has just got a, a couple of thousand gallon tanks on them with a trough just to get a bit more flow to the troughs. We put the big tank in first, that so was about 60,000, 68,000 okay. gallons. Yep. That was about uh, $20,000. The plastic would have been, uh, probably by the time we laid it and the labour to weld it, would have been close to 15 grand, I guess. My water bill was getting up around 12 or 15 grand, so maybe, you know, a couple of years it'll almost pay for itself. Well, we're doing it because water is getting very expensive and um, it's just a way to be self-sufficient, and there's nothing like giving fresh water to your stock. Yeah, it's definitely worth it, yeah.